Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's something a little bit more challenging for those who want to advance a little bit more into this uh, field of physics. So we're going to talk about resistivity and resistance, but we're not going to apply it to a non-typical kind of resistor called a radial current resistor, meaning if current were to flow with a wire to the inside of this object, and then current would continue then to the, from the outside of the resistance, you could then see that the current would flow from inside to outside in the radial direction. And what would then be the resistance of this resistor if it has resistivity rho, length L, inner diameter or inner radius A, and outer radius B? So what would be the resistance of that capacitor? So R equals question mark. So going back to the basic equation for resistance, knowing the resistivity, we can say that R is equal to rho, the resistivity, times the length divided by the, um, by the cross-sectional area A. But now here we have to be careful. We, now, we know that the current doesn't run through the length of this object, it runs from the inside to the outside. So length in this case becomes very different. The length is the distance the current has to travel from the inside to the outside and then the cross-sectional area would be kind of like the inside cross-sectional area of a cylinder. Um, also, notice that the, the um, distance is different on the inside than it's on the outside, so you're not really dealing with um, the cross-sectional area staying uniform, the cross-sectional area is actually changing. If you were to cut this, for example, if you were to cut this open and lay this flat, Basically, what you end up with is something that looks like this. So that would be the inside of the cylinder if you were to wrap it completely around. That would be the outside of the cylinder if you were to wrap it completely around. So the cross-sectional area is kind of like a trapezoid with changing, uh, changing distance or changing diameter. And uh, you can't just straightforward uh, solve this problem. You actually have to use calculus to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that this is going to travel through uh, side by side little cylinders. So if we draw a typical cylinder here, and maybe I want to use a different color that makes it a little bit easier to see. So let's say that I have a little segment of this current flow like this, a little tiny little segment, and uh, that has a thickness of dr, a small little dr a small little piece of the radius of that cylinder. And of course, I would then go all the way through, a little, all the way through the cylinder on both sides like this. Okay, and what I can say then is that the resistance of that little piece of it is a little dr, a small little portion of the resistance, and that's going to equal to the resistivity rho times the length of the travel of the current. And the length of the travel of the current would be, of course, that little thickness right there. So the length of travel would be uh, a D. Oh, I can't use big R because I already use big R for the resistance. So I'm going to use little r for the radius. So I'm going to call that little dr. So I'm going to call this a little dr. That's a distance that the current has to flow from the inside to the outside through that little segment right there. And then the cross-sectional area, I would, if I were to cut this and lay this flat, since it's so thin, I wouldn't get this trapezoidal shape, I would actually get a rectangular shape, like so. I would get a rectangular shape where you have L for the length, the thickness here would be the dr, and then the width here would be the circumference of that, and that would be uh, a distance r away from the center, so that would be 2 pi r, times the thickness of the r times the length. So the cross-sectional area of that would be the width times the length, that would be 2 pi r times l. 2 pi, the radius, times l. That would be the cross-sectional area of that little segment of that resistor where the current has to flow through. Okay, and now if I want to find the total resistance, that would be equal to the sum of all these little segments. I would then add them all up, an infinite number of little segments with infinite uh, small thickness of dr. So we have uh, r would be the integral of all the drs, which would be the integral of the rho times dr over 2 pi rl. And of course, you want to integrate from a to b, from the inner radius to the outer radius, from a to b, like so. All right, now notice that the 
resistivity is a constant, 2 pi is a constant, L is a constant, all those can come out to an integral sign, so the radius is equal to, and I'll use black from now on because that's easier to see on the whiteboard, so we have uh, R is equal to pulling out the rho and pulling out the 2 pi L, because all that is constant, times the integral from A to B of uh, dr over r. And that is fairly easy to integrate because the integral of dr over r is the natural log of r. So this can be written as rho divided by 2 pi l times the natural log of r evaluated from a to b. Of course, then we plug in the upper limit and subtract when we plug in the lower limit. So this is equal to the resistivity divided by 2 pi l times, when we plug in the upper limit, we get the natural log of b, minus when we plug in the lower limit, we get the natural log of a. Of course, the natural log of b over a can be written as the natural log of b over a. So this can be written as rho times divided by 2 pi l times the natural log of b over a. Like that. And that is the resistance of a cylindrical object like that, where the current flows from the inside radius A to the outside radius B, from the inside to the outside, not along the length, but along the thickness of that uh, strangely uh, strange object resistor. Okay, so a nice little example where you need to use some calculus to find out the resistance of an object like that.